the reasons why economics is so important is precisely this is that it affects so many people's lives directly and indirectly through economic policies and it is one of the important areas in which economics is presented as a science when it's not it's a social science which means it's inherently subjective it uh, all of the economic models have with them significant assumptions many of which are often unrealistic and yet the results of those models are then used to justify particular policies which are imposed on economies so there's a very substantial difference between the the study of economics and the ways in which economic engineering as you describe it the policies that are then presented to people are done let me just give you one example so much of the developing world's trade and industrial policies are driven by what are called the principles of comparative advantage and these are taken as you know taken for granted that this is part of the the iconic you know knowledge within economics and it's obviously true and has to be implemented which means countries must invest in the areas in which they have comparative advantage this ignores the fact that most of the i mean that the theory of comparative advantage including the heckscher rollin factor endowment theory as it's called is based on a set of very very simplifying and wrong assumptions wrong in the sense that they're not relevant to the modern world for example perfect competition for example constant returns to scale which means there are no scale economies now once you do that and you say you have to invest in the areas in which you have your comparative advantage today you are condemning countries to stay at that low level of development not to get into areas with increasing returns to scale with uh, they also assume full employment which we know doesn't exist in the world today the minute you drop both those assumptions the results of those models collapse yet policy makers use those models in situations where they're completely not valid the countries that have been successful when you think about it in trade terms are the countries that have ignored that advice coming from those economic models japan korea china today they all ignored that advice and it's only when you actually recognize that the model is based on these assumptions let's check whether those assumptions hold for our reality and let's then think of other arguments that may hold better for our reality it's only then that you can actually do economic engineering that is beneficial for the greater majority of the people 